Hey, just standing in front of some interesting backgrounds and I was thinking I didn't do a great job of explaining those orthogonal linear contrasts and just how it is that they all come together to reproduce or recompose the original set of means. So I thought I'd do one more example. Let's check it out. All right, we just finished in the previous section going over orthogonal linear contrasts. We talked about this idea up here that each mean contributes a unique source to the deviations from the grand mean. We talked about how this could be expressed as three orthogonal linear contrasts. And then we talked about an alternative set of orthogonal linear contrasts described right here. I wasn't super happy with how I explained the concept of these contrasts and how they work together. I think from this graph you can see the idea that uh, a, a signal like this contributes to both of these means being down and both of these means being up, and a signal like this contributes to B being a little bit S less than A, and a signal like this contributes to D being a little bit more than C. So that, that is the big idea. But let's step into the math one more time, and what I want to show you now is the idea that um, for orthogonal linear contrasts, this will be true of any set of orthogonal linear contrasts, if you add them up in the right way, you're guaranteed to get the pattern of original means back. So let's take a look at that. Okay, first of all, let's remind ourselves the four means we're talking about are in this variable here. They are 4, 3, 10, and 11. And we created these linear contrasts. Here they are. There's three of them. One in column one, and the other one in column two, and the other one in column three. So my claim is we can add these things together in different combinations and we'll produce different kinds of uh, four, four numbers. The claim is that you can, there, there will be a way to add up these contrasts to produce this specific pattern of numbers. So we're decomposing this pattern in terms of these three components because the three components are independent or orthogonal we can uh, be guaranteed to recompose these things so remember we're doing this all in terms of the grand mean so basically the idea is we're going to start off with four sevens oh so that's the grand mean of uh, these four numbers and by adding in combinations of these contrasts we're going to create deviations off of those sevens. And if we add in the right amount of each of these, we will be able to get back these four numbers. Let's try it out just to kind of get a sense of what I'm talking about. So if we took our grand means here and just looked at them, let's, let's do the process of adding one linear contrast to these means to the grand mean. Now I've uh, gone and taken the first column. So let's just look at that real quick. Here it is. This is the linear contrast, negative one, negative one, one and one. So when I'm talking about adding this to the grand means, I'm just literally talking about doing this. So we're gonna take all those sevens, add this pattern, and then we get two sixes and two eights because the first two ones went down and the second two ones went up. So we could keep adding this pattern as many times as we want. Like if we doubled the linear contrast, that'd be like adding it twice. And if we added two of these to the grand means, we'd get five, five, and nine, nine. Remember, we're trying to add these contrasts to produce the values four, three, 10, and 11. Now, I hope you can see that there's no way of adding just this one contrast here to ever get those numbers. No matter uh, how many of this contrast we add, uh, A and B will always be the same value and C and D will always be the same value, right? That's because uh, A and B have the same value here and our grand mean is the same number. So there's no way to add this contrast in any amount to ever produce different values for A and B. In order to get different values for A and B, we need that other contrast, that one that says A and B are different. So we could add a little bit of the first one and a little bit of the second one together. So let's think about doing something like that. 
Okay, here I'm taking the grand mean, it's seven. I'm adding the first contrast, I'm just adding one of it. Now remember the second contrast, it looks like this. So this is going to add one to A and negative one to B. So let's add the first, one of the first contrast and one of the second. So now A and B are both smaller than uh, C and D, and A is larger than B because we added up all these things together. We could, here's what happens if we add all three contrasts, one of each. So we get seven, five, and seven, nine. Now the original claim was there'd be some way of adding these contrasts together in order to produce the original set of means. And just to remind, those means were 4, 3, 10, and 11. So let's mess around by hand. I mean, I'm not sure exactly how many of each uh, I need to add. We could think of these values here as the coefficients telling, mu telling us how much of each contrast we're adding to the grand means. Um, let's, oh, I, okay, so I, I see that seven and five are too high for four and three. We need to get seven and five down more. And we could do that. And we also need to get seven and nine up more. So we can do that by adding another of the first contrast because that pushes A and B down and C and D up. So let's do that. Okay, great. So we got six, four, eight, and 10. That's still not quite what we're looking for with four, three, 10, and 11. So A and B need to go down even more and C and D need to go up even more. So let's go to three. Okay, we got five, three, nine, and 11. This is getting close, but it's not bang on. I could fiddle around by hand, or I'm gonna show you a little trick. We can use linear regression here. This is something your textbook talks about. So we could think of the question, um, let's take our means four, three, 10, and 11. And let's think about explaining the variation in these means in a multiple linear regression context. And so we have, for our multiple linear regression, we might want to say, well, let's use these contrasts as the IVs in our linear regression, as our predictor variables. So can we predict the variation here on the basis of these three predictor variables? Now, because these three predictor variables are orthogonal linear contrasts, the answer is yes, 100%. We can exactly describe the pattern in these means, and the coefficients we'll get out of the linear regression will tell us exactly how much of each of these is necessary to produce uh, these, this particular set of values. So let's go ahead and run the linear regression. What I'm gonna do is take our data, put it in this variable here. I'm going to column bind on the contrasts. So if we were to look at this, it is our grouping uh, levels. We've got our dependent variable, and then we've got three different predictor variables that we could use in the linear regression. So we'll run a linear regression here and we're going to try to predict the dependent variable containing the four means as a function of the three linear contrasts that we made. So we could do that. Here we go. Now, notice the intercept is seven. That's the grand mean. And these coefficients are telling us um, exactly how much of each linear contrast we need in order to explain the data. So if I was to go, so it's 3.5, 0.5, and 0.5. So let's go back up here and add in 3.5, 0.5, and 0.5. So we're gonna add in 3.5 of the first contrast, 0.5 of the second, and 0.5 of the third to the grand means, and let's see what we get. Oh, we get the original pattern of means back. If you wanted to do the summary here, you can see that the regression, the multiple R squared is one because we explain all of the data perfectly. So that's the example um, showing that, I'm just gonna fix this. Okay, so I don't have time to dive into this right now, 
The above will always be true for any set of orthogonal linear contrasts. You can always decompose and recompose your set of means into weighted contributions of orthogonal linear contrasts. Uh, this will probably be one of your generalization problems for today's lab. I want to do one more demonstration. So the idea that I'm trying to get across is that we can take a set of orthogonal linear contrasts and above I just mentioned it could be any set really and that set would be able to perfectly explain any pattern of means. Now what I've done here is I've created a new pattern of means one two three four. I think before it was uh, four three ten eleven. Now if the claim is true that any set of orthogonal linear contrast should be able to perfectly explain any set of means. Uh, what I'm keeping the linear contrast that we had before. So these are the same ones. I'm not changing these, but I'm going to show you that we could use this set of orthogonal linear contrasts to reconstitute any set of means. We can just mess around. So let's make uh, the means one, two, three, and four. There's our contrasts. Let's add those to the independent variable. And um, if we make another set of fake data, before we were trying to see if these linear contrasts could explain the other pattern of means. Now we've changed the pattern of means. Will these be able to explain this pattern? And we can run our linear regression and we can see the weights that you would need. There's a new grand mean. These are the amounts of each linear contrast you'd need to perfectly reconstruct each of the values in the dependent variable. And if we just wanted to check how that we have explained all the variants, we can see that multiple r squared is one. And this will always be true uh, because this is really how it works. Um, we could change this to any, any set of values that we want. So there's a bunch of random values and we can decompose these four values in terms of these same orthogonal linear contrasts. And let's see this time, it turns out we need these values in order to do that. And we can see that multiple r squared is one. All right, that's my second attempt at giving uh, you a, some ways to think about linear contrast using r. We're going to head into a Monte Carlo simulation very shortly in the next video. And uh, just to prep you for that, okay, we've got a normal ANOVA where we get an F value. We might want to know if there's some differences somewhere. That's called the omnibus test. When we start thinking about these linear contrasts, um, we're basically breaking down that F test, that single F test, and decomposing it in terms of different patterns. So when we do this, we're doing multiple tests. And this has implications for things like type one error rate, especially if you think about these three different tests as belonging to the same family of tests. And so we'll discuss that issue in the next video.